Justin. You would be supportive of me if I told you that I figured out what I want to do with my life. Of course. I'm a private investigator. You're a private investigator? Yep. Are you joking? I'm not joking. You're not joking? No. I'm Steve Saddleman, P.I. Interesting. Uh, interesting. Look, do you think I'm whack? No, I don't think you're whack. Have you tried yoga? Here, take a look at this. Check that out. Settlement and Associates, we've got the nuts to crack any case. So Severance is about um, a frustrated high-tech worker who uh, you know, hates his job, is in love with this girl that he can't express his feelings for, and on his 30th birthday, he's uh, sort of uh, embarrassed publicly by his best friend and gets really frustrated and sort of blows up at work and is given a chance to sort of uh, live a new life by getting severance from his job. And he's sort of this, um, he's sort of this, uh, he, he loves uh, classic Hollywood movies and he wants to be a detective novelist, but he can't really write anything. And so he has this sort of cracked idea that he's gonna try and live the life of a Hollywood hero even though he has no idea what that means. And uh, the movie is in black and white as a tribute to classic Hollywood cinema. And in fact, as the movie moves from this sort of everyday, real life existence of the main character, Steve, into this sort of idealized fantasy life, the style of the movie changes and you actually uh, watch sort of the frame fill up with smoke and shadows. It starts to look like um, a film from uh, 40s, a film noir cinema. My name is Steve Saddleman, and I live in a city. It's a city of hopes and dreams, but just like the mirrored glass of its towering monoliths, those dreams are easily shattered. Oh, I like that. You see, here's the thing. Before you can begin pursuing a dream, you first have to be awake. Yet there are those of us who continue to simply sleepwalk through our lives. We've become sedated by work, modern technology, and tasty beverages. Take me, for instance. I work for an internet development company. I don't even know how I got there. More importantly, I don't know where I'm going. We went into production um, in the summer of 2002 and shot for 29 days, but we couldn't shoot consecutively because you know, we couldn't pay anyone. Well, we paid a few people. Um, most everyone worked for free, and most everyone had real jobs, so we had to shoot on the weekends. So what we did is we shot you know, three-day weekends over the course of like two months, and then some night shoots during the week, and you know, by the end of that summer, we, we had the film in the can. I actually worked um, in high tech for several years, and I worked for a company that got uh, bought by a large company that then laid everyone all off because they didn't realize how they could use the company. And so I sort of got laid off and then I was like, what am I gonna do with you know, my severance check and my year off? And I always wanted to make a, a film and had written a few scripts in, in the years you know, preceding and sort of decided, well, uh, I should write about something I know and I can make this movie pretty cheap if I you know, keep it to a minimum of characters and locations. And so I figured if I uh, you know, put the money that I got from my severance check in the bank and wrote the script and just focused on, on, on you know, good characters and a, and a good story, but keep it simple, then, you know, I could actually use my severance and make, and make a movie, which is to a large extent what I did, yeah. Shall we toast? Of course. What are we toasting to? Mm. To inspiration. What happened? I don't know, I think I got some glass in my eye. Oh my god! Ah! Ah! Jennifer, hold still, don't move. Yeah. Are, are, are you okay, are you all right? Um, yeah, I think so. Ho ho hold on, let me, let me check your eye. 
No, no, it looked like a little wine splashed in there. There's no glass. You know, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to say. You really know how to sweep a girl off her feet? We had the original rough cut, and then we had a more focused, you know, second cut. And over the course of a year, we had a, a few more uh, test screenings, a few more refinements. We didn't have the finished movie until just this summer. I would say probably August, we had a cut of the movie that was as complete as it is now as it probably will ever be, which is that honed down picture cut and then the sweetened, polished version with all the music, all the sound has been mixed, uh, visual uh, enhancement. Now it was just sort of this waiting game. This is the cut that's going to play at a festival. Let's see if we get in. Uh, and, you know, a month later, uh, the, the Austin Film Festival gave me a call and said, hey, we'd like, to, we'd like to screen your movie. And so that was like, boom, bingo. And the great thing about that is it's an, it's an Austin-made film. It's a local film. So your world premiere, you can really play up the local film thing. And so we just went to town and started making posters and flyers, press releases, um, and just getting the word out. It's a really cool festival in terms of just being able to uh, hang out and uh, at a comfortable level uh, interact with you know industry folks, a lot of like writers and producers. And so we've actually made some friends with those kind of people who might be able to help the film, spread the word about it, get it into some festivals, things like that. So at least there are some people outside of Austin who now are, are familiar with the film. I read the main character in the movie uh, wears this white tuxedo that he finds at a thrift shop and he sort of wears it everywhere. It kind of becomes this joke, right? So I wore this white tuxedo during the festival and that would clue people in. People would remember that. They'd remember the name of the movie and we were able to create some sort of buzz and some sort of branding, I guess, if you will. Um, so a lot of those things we learn from the festival and we can take with, with us to other festivals and other opportunities to market the film. Making screener DVDs that you can, that you, well you have to have those to send to festivals. Um, you want to have them ready to hand out to anyone that might help you out. And I'm realizing that you got to, it's like I said before, it's like this, you, you start this sort of steam engine going, but if you don't feed it any more coal, it starts to slow down. So you have to, you have to kind of create these opportunities. And you know, you should be contacting the press routinely, even if nothing's really happening with the movie, just to keep them in their minds, especially if you've had already had re some reviews, you know those contacts keep in because they've already they already have some positive feelings about your film. So keep in contact with them. Say, hey, you know, here's what we're doing. You know, nothing's happening yet, but here's what we're doing. You know, especially in Austin, where the film community is small enough that you 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 can pretty much know who's in the game. You know that you can the 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 parameters of that. Um, it's not it's not so big that you just lose track of who all these people are and you know where all the avenues are you know the film societies screenings things like this um, just getting the word out just keep talking about it because you never know who you're gonna meet in Austin that might be associated with filmmaking it's weird ever since the Austin Film Festival every once in a while someone will come up to me and be like hey I, I saw your I recognize you I saw your movie I really liked it and then that's that's like I don't think that would ever stop being cool to like have people come up and say they liked something you did, you know? I, I just think that's, I mean, I'm always just floored by that whenever, whenever anyone does that. So if that can keep happening, then that means people have it in their heads and then that's, that's gonna be good for the film and for future films.